Welcome back. I'm still talking to the brilliant Alex Phillips. Uh, Alex, uh, Taylor Swift, uh, she had these concerts at uh, Wembley Stadium. Uh, seems like Keir Starmer went about 500 times. Uh, I mean, it seems unusual punishment to me. To go to see a Taylor Swift concert once uh, is uh, perhaps acceptable. To go twice seems like carelessness to me. But uh, he kept going. Uh, half the Cabinet seemed to get free tickets. Remember the uh, Education Secretary, Bridget F Phillips, and said, well, I just couldn't turn it down. Well, actually, Bridget, you could have done, but there you go. You lot never do. Anyway, Free Gear Keir was there. Uh, the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, was there. And a Apparently, uh, uh, Taylor Swift's mother and manager, Andrea, uh, said to the authorities, said to the government and said to the police, uh, my daughter uh, must have a full blue light royalty style cop convoy to take her to and from the stadium because she's just come from Austria where there was a big security scare. There was a plot to wreck one of her concerts uh, by terrorists. Uh, fortunately, nothing happened. But she, she was clearly, uh, you know, in an anxious state, and I don't blame her. So her mother demanded this. The police said, the Metropolitan Police said, I'm sorry, we don't do this for private citizens. You know, as Prince Harry has been finding out, we don't do that. Uh, apparently, uh, money was torn to, or we can pay for this. No, no, no. We don't allow people to pay for our police to protect them. Uh, and we don't, do not believe that Taylor Swift needs this. Uh, in comes, apparently, Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary, and uh, Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor, to say, oh, yeah, you know, you've got to do this. In the end, the police buckled and gave her this very special, it's called VVIP treatment, that actually she did not warrant. As I say, why do you think uh, they were so keen for her to get what she wanted? Was it because so many of the Labour government had taken free tickets for her concert? I mean, first of all, I have sympathy with anybody who has gone through the ordeal of, you know, being an international superstar and then there's a terrorist plot sure, against absolutely. one of the concerts. Yeah. But the problem isn't when you go and die in the N25, love. The problem's when you're actually in the stadium. Yeah. That's where you're going to have the terrorist attack, not halfway up the blooming motorway. Mm. And if a security assessment was done that you didn't need this, and she can pay to have proper security, you know, and they might not be able to carry guns, but she's got money enough to have her security detail here, who are very good at looking out for threats, planning a route. When you've got a security detail, they negotiate with the police, they work with the police, they say, we're going to be doing these routes, so on and so forth, they liaise. And, you know, frankly, when it was said, we don't need it and our police aren't for sale, that should have been the end of the matter. We're a responsible country. If we thought for any reason that she was going to face some damage and that she was going to come to harm on our soil, I'm pretty sure and we've got the best intelligence services in the world. I'm pretty sure that people said, look, Taylor Love, maybe cancel your contact uh, concert because someone wants to blow it up. Um, and the fact that the Labour government buckled to this, they're a bit like the Democrats in America. They can't help but wanting to run around with slebs, can they? Because they're all the sort of sad little ugly kids with their Lego man hairstyles who were bullied <laughs> at school. And, you know, I remember when Sir Keir Starmer went on Good Morning Britain to say he had been to a Taylor Swift concert to try and make himself look like a human. He's like, oh, I went to Taylor Swift, you know, that sort of weird face that doesn't move. And, you know, trying to ingratiate himself to look like he's got a heart and a soul um and then you find out he got it for free yeah. and he went twice i mean what is wrong with the man but this uh, I mean, this the problem they love it the lefty lovies aren't they they but, love it but, they but it, 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 it you know it, 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 if you really delve down into this it doesn't matter that much on in the big scheme of things but think about it think about it why did they do this taylor and her mum wanted this protection from the police uh half the cabinet and the london mayor the labor london mayor had taken free tickets to the concert taylor's people get in touch with yvette get in touch with sadiq and that's the way it works taylor uh, or rather sadiq kia Yvette are beholden to her and that's why the freebie gate scandal is such a scandal you take free stuff people want things in return that's what this story is all about 
Well, exactly. And I don't think anyone's really asked about Lord Ali enough. There's something weird going on, right? Like, I don't know. I know you you, you know the guy and you say he's a really nice geezer, okay? So I'm, I'm sure he's a nice geezer. Just because you're donating to the Labour Party, it doesn't make you the devil incarnate. <laughs> but normally, in a political situation like this, when all of a sudden it's exposed that somebody is not just giving donations to run campaigns, but buying clothes, buying clothes for the wife, offering holiday homes, having their apartment used for all sorts of transition meetings which you'd think would, should be in highly secure environments and, and surely someone should ask the question or do an interview with him and go all right love um what what is it that you want in return of that the passing dining street what were you doing there there seems to be this complicity among the journalists to not ask that question and i don't know why there's only one sort of outlet who's really doing some digging on this and that's the guido Fawkes website who's gone like mm, so what is it that you were doing in syria you were mates with um uh that's Assad, sad, yeah. you know, that very strange. Guy who's a, that. He wanted to be toppled because his regime was, you know, and still is in cahoots with Hezbollah and Hamas and all the lot of it. And he was there going, oh, no, he's my mate. He must stay in power. Then he went to have some funny meetings at Blair's behest in Iraq. And you're like, there is something to be dug here. Mm. And yet all they do is go on and on and on and on and on to these MPs. Do you think you should have taken the ticket? Do you think you should have taken the ticket? I'm like, this isn't journalism. Yeah. Do some no. investigating. I mean, what I think about Waheed, you know, I've known him for, you know, 40 years. And uh, he's a lovely man. And he once gave up you know, literally a weeks of his time to help my wife when she was trying to launch a business as well. And he just did it out of the goodness of his heart. Uh, he is a nice man. And uh, I believe he does all of this because he passionately believes in the Labour project. He has the mistaken view that Labour is good for this country. Uh, that's why he does it. But... Uh, which I, you know, I don't, I don't think you can hold that against people. However, <laughs> however, I think this is a shambles. I think it's out of control. He is, uh, clearly too much was being given on a general basis. And uh, Keir Starmer, when last week he said, I'm going to give back the £6,000 worth of freebies I've taken since I became Prime Minister. What was going through his head that he ever took freebies as Prime Minister anyway? But when he says that, so, you know, £6,000 worth of freedoms yeah. that represents a 20th one twentieth of the total number of freebies the Prime Minister has taken since 2019. So he's saying it's kind of wrong, it's a bit wrong, but you know, generally it's all right. Well, you can't, on, the, on the, accepting hospitality and freebies, it's like being pregnant. You can't be a bit pregnant and you can't be a bit wrong on accepting freebies. Uh, when he gave back that six grand's worth, he accepted that the whole freebie gate thing was fundamentally wrong. It's a, it's mad, like the optics of this. So the, the people who are advising him, I mean, he must be an utter numbskull or just sociopathic to not realise the optics of that are dreadful. But the people advising him saying, oh, why don't you just pay back a bit here? I'll keep the arsenal because you like the football, don't you? And you deserve that. <laughs> you know, give back a little bit. It's like somebody doing a massive poo in the corner of the room and going, oh, sorry about that. See this one little pellet here? I'm going to go flush it down the corner. Just <laughs> thinking in the corner. Like, like, what are you doing? It's just mad. <laughs> Well, that, that was the analogy of the year, but it's a good analogy. Exactly right. You know, let's just clear up a little bit of the crap I just <laughs> left in the corner of your room. That's exactly what it is. No, care. you've got to clear it all out. Uh, we better go to break, but one last point, and don't be too long-winded on this because I must go to the adverts. Uh, I, 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 f I feel that these Westminster, this Westminster lot, and by the way, Notice how mute all the other parties are on this because they've got their trough, their snouts in the trough as well. Uh, uh, but I don't think that this Westminster lot realise that they've embarked on a journey here. Uh, when Keir gave back the six grand, gave back, said he won't have any more free clothes, suddenly thought, oh my God, that was £16,000 worth of office expenses. I've just remembered it was suits. Hey, uh, when he starts doing this, uh, he, they have embarked on a journey they don't realise they're on. And this journey has a destination. And the destination is there will be no more freebies. They'll have to stop them altogether. Right.
Yeah, and that's going to be, in a way, that's going to be quite difficult because when you do have, you know, because they're thinking of now putting on the register of interest meals and stuff. Well, if you're going out for a meal, like if I get elected tomorrow and I go out for a meal with you, is that because you're bending my ear as a journalist or is this a mate's meal? Mm. You know, I, I just think it's a controversial opinion, but I think we actually should pay our MPs a bit better. But I also think we just got a different class of politicians now. Once upon a time, you have politicians who believed in politics. They believed in a party. They believed in a manifesto. They had an ideology. Now it's just a load of people who wouldn't make it past the first audition of X Factor who just want to feel, you know, famous in their own town square. That's it. These people are wannabe celebrities. They're not politicians. That's why they take all the free gifts, the clothes, the VIP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. yeah it, uh, but uh, I saw the Tim Montgomery uh, last night who knows a thing or two about working at Downing Street and the way it all works. And I said, well, so how can... Keir's got to draw a line under Preby Gate. Somehow or other, he has to persuade the public that this disgusting activity uh, is over. I said, how does he do it? And uh, Tim said, uh, he can't. It's gone too far. He's stuck with this. Uh, when we come back after these messages, Alex, uh, we're going to talk about a kind of element of uh, Keir's... Uh, massive problem uh, and that is that while him and his mates are all trousering freebies while a man who earned £404,000 last year gets free suits from another multi-millionaire uh, the pensioners are going to freeze to death this is a big problem for them